Hey everyone, Cardlin here with the newest issue of the Patreon Roll Call. What we do here is we give a little thanks and shout out to all the new Patreons who signed up, as well as answer some questions and read some quotes that they might have for me. Now I want you to maybe grab a little snack, get something to drink, get cozy, because we're going to be here for a while. I don't know if you noticed, but pretty much since November I've been busy. <laughs> With uh, family visiting, you know, my son was here, my girlfriend was here, we went on a vacation, came back, and I recently moved to a different city, and I just recently got settled in, so I haven't done one of these since, well, since November. I have to do shoutouts for all of December and all of January, so this is going to be a little long. I'm going to have a lot of names, going to have a lot of questions, going to have a lot of quotes. And I hope you can just sit back and chill with me for a bit. We're going to go ahead and kick it off with some questions we have from some lovely patrons who were kind enough to ask them for me. Let's see, what do we got here? We got a question from Melissa. Which comic book universe is your favorite? And who's your favorite hero from it? For example, Marvel and Thor or DC and Superman. Uh, this one's easy. Marvel's my favorite universe, and the Hulk, by far, is my favorite superhero. Because I like how we can go from brutally simple and basic to extremely complex and, you know, kind of, uh, complicated. Plus the fact that he's just the strongest ever, right? I like the fact that he's so strong that he can break rules. Like, he's strong enough to lift Thor's hammer just because he's strong, like, strong enough to break a god's law. That's pretty freaking awesome. We got a question from Emily M. Asking, any New Year's resolutions? Yeah, actually, I had uh, three that I started the year with. Let's see. To get into a spot where I was feeling comfortable and safe and secure enough in my career and my life that I could uh, propose to my girlfriend, to... Um, secure and establish a life and a home out here for my son for him to start high school in the summer or rather continue his high schooling in the summer he'll be a junior and uh, to continue to grow and succeed hopefully here on YouTube you know I want to double down on my efforts here on YouTube and um, you know I was planning on maybe putting the YouTube aside and putting more effort into voice acting, but I think, I don't know, I think there's something here, right? Like, I think there might be, I think I, I might give this YouTube thing a shot. So <laughs> I'm going to redouble my efforts here on YouTube and uh, see if I can't grow the channel even more, maybe even hit 100k. We have a question from Essence Cherie. Which is, are there any upcoming scripts you're excited to do? And will you be doing another Yandere type of video? Yeah, um, yes to both. Plenty, actually. I have a huge library of scripts that I haven't had the time to record. You know, I only upload three times a week and sometimes not even that. Uh, but I get so many scripts and they're all so great. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out a way to solve that. I don't know if it's good to just have a huge database, I'll always have something to rely on, or if I should just up the amount that I upload, and just like, maybe upload more times in the week. Hmm. I don't know. Because we keep getting new scripts in, and they're also good. It's almost like I just don't have the time to do them all. Hmm. I have a question from Kuro Kumori. Which is, as a fan of bears, is there a particular subspecies of bear that you consider your favorite? Like the American grizzly or the sloth bear? I like the polar bear. Or just like... A big old fat fuzzy brown bear. Yeah. I have a question from Vina, which is, do you ever feel awkward making erotic audios? Eh, sometimes. Like, awkward... Well, what's more awkward is trying to find a time wherein my roomies are not home so that they won't hear me moaning and groaning, you know? The walls are kind of thin here. Um, but other than that, no, not really. I mean, I know it's just acting, right? I'm able to detach myself from what I'm doing pretty well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm able, like, I, I guess that's one of my strengths because a lot of people seem to seem to comment about how hard it is to 
put themselves in the situation or how do I dive into characters or how do I get into characters so well or how do I bring myself to doing things like this which is you know kind of implying that it's really embarrassing and that they could never do it so I guess one of my strengths is the ability to basically detach and know that you know that isn't me that's me playing a role that's me as an actor diving into a, the role of a character and that that's what the character is doing and saying and feeling not me I have a question from Mabel actually a couple of questions Mabel asks do you have any degrees no if so what were you planning to pursue with them uh, well that answers that if not what degree would you get hmm maybe like sound engineering at this point or like I don't know, I guess digital production, you know, to kind of like help boost my current career. Uh, Mabel also asks, what do you believe to be the redeeming quality of humanity? You know, if you look at the world, you look at the news, you look what's being blasted on Twitter, you'll always see some horrible, shitty thing happening. Like the president said something crazy, or this person killed this other person, or this person killed several other persons. and all these injustices and all this cruelty, but there's a lot of good out there too, you know? There's a lot of good in the small things and helping people in the day-to-day. -day. And I think the redeeming quality of humanity, even though like the general consensus of nowadays is uh, I don't want to live on this planet anymore, you know what I mean? The redeeming quality of humanity has got to be tenacity. Like an un a, a stubborn unwillingness to give up. You know, a complete and utter inability to quit. And I think that's um, that's what separates us from the pack. Misa A has a question, which is, do you like to stay up on New Year's Eve to see in the new year? Um, yeah, I used to. Not so much anymore. Maybe now that my son will be here, we can stay up and do countdowns or even have like little parties and stuff with friends and stuff. That'd be cool. But, uh, honestly, if it's just me, usually, like, I'm, what usually ends up happening is I'm playing a game, and then somebody will be like, oh, dude, it's the new year. I'm like, oh, cool. Happy New Year. And then we go back to playing the game. <laughs> Spazzy Fay has a question. Uh, they're looking for advice. When do you know when you're ready to go back into the dating scene? Currently, I haven't been in one for a year now, and the last relationship wasn't the greatest on both ends. So now I'm in the middle point of I'm going in to I think I should stay here. Friends haven't helped, so maybe I can ask someone with more experience. Well, my first piece of advice for anybody looking for advice on any topic is don't take advice from strangers on the internet. You know, no one's going to know the ins and outs of your situation better than you. Like, sure, there's some general wisdom you can glean, but keep in mind that your situation is always going to be unique, and I'm never going to be able to know all the ins and outs, and at the end of the day, every decision you make should be your own, and you should embrace them, and um, back them wholeheartedly. Now, as for some general advice regarding your situation, when do you know you are ready to get back into the dating scene? When... Ah, uh, I don't know, uh, when you stop thinking about the person you used to be with, and you... Uh, find yourself attracted to somebody else, right? It's like when you're addicted to something and you do it all the time every day and then you stop and you begin to realize that, you know, maybe at first you're like, how do I exist without this? I was so reliant on this pattern, on this, uh, on this steadfast thing that I had all the time. And when it's gone and you realize that you're okay, you realize you can start moving on and start doing other stuff. That helps. Catherine M has a question, which is, I have a question for you. Do you ever consider doing an erotic spa day ASMR? Um, sure. I mean, I'll, I'll do any script that I like. You know, if, if there's a script that you can send me for a spa day and I like it, I'll do it. I don't really know too much about spa days, to be honest. So, um... Uh, does it have to be something someone sent me? I'd have to go over it. Little Kitten has a question, which is, I love your audio so much. Uh, what got you, or why did you decide to do ASMR audio? 
So when I started doing this, I didn't really know it was ASMR audio. I didn't really know it was ASMR at all. I only tangentially knew about ASMR, and I didn't think that it had anything to do with audio role plays. Um, it wasn't until I moved from Reddit to YouTube that I realized that some people were calling it a form of ASMR. So I, that's why I call them like ASMR role plays. Um, so. Yeah, I, I, I guess. Does that answer your question? Uh, what got you, or why did you decide to do ASMR audio? Why did I decide to do it? Because I saw other people doing it on Reddit, in a subreddit called um, Gone Wild Audio, which is 18 plus only, as well as um, some other subreddits. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I wonder if I could do that. Gave it a shot, and people liked it. Hungry Potato has a question, which is, if you could know the absolute and total truth to one question, what question would you ask? You know, this is uh, interesting. There was a time when I, you know, I thought about that question a lot, and, I, and the answer that I would want is what actually happened with, you know, with Jesus Christ, you know? Well, what actually happened 2018 years ago? What What's the story there? Who is that man? What did he do? Now, um... The answer would be, uh, what is this upcoming week's, uh, Powerball numbers? You know, or what are the numbers for this upcoming week's Powerball? Because, uh, <laughs> I'm not so much caught up in the past anymore and more focused on the future. Let's see. Jennifer C. asks, If you could travel anywhere, all expenses paid, where would you go and why? Assuming I could take people with me, I'd want to go bring my son, my girlfriend, and my mom to the Philippines. That'd be cool. We haven't been in a while, and my son's never been. He's been asking for it. Um, my girlfriend's never been. Um, and it'd be good to see family there again. Yeah. If I had to go solo? Yeesh, I don't know. I don't know that I want to go anywhere solo. <laughs> Uh, Jennifer C. also has a question, which is obviously Carlin is just the person you voice, but like any actor, there's some things that are similar to them in real life and things that are nothing like you behind the voice. What ways are you like Carlin in real life, and what ways are you completely opposite of Carlin? Um, Carlin's perfect, you know? He's always thoughtful, he's always caring, he'll never forget a date, he'll never forget, um, he'll never miss a chance to show affection, he'll never miss a chance to make you smile. And I guess that's how we're different, you know? I think everybody can, I don't know, I think everybody's perfect like 10% of the time at least, you know? And with effort, you know, with putting in some more effort, you can be a little more perfect more often, but nobody's perfect 100% of the time like Carlin is, you know? Carlin always has the right thing to say. Carlin always has the most meaningful line that can really cut to the truth. And, uh, I, like any other person, am not like that. <laughs> but, you know, I aspire to be. Cardlin is a role model for me, in a way. Let's see. Question from Rihanna. Is there any book you wish you could go back and read again as if you had never read it before? Be able to read it all fresh. Ooh, good question. Uh, the Wheel of Time series was great. The, you know, the first book... I've read it a couple times now, and each time it's still amazing. But yeah, that first magical feeling of, wow, this is what fantasy novels are all about. You know, it's my first big series that I really dug into. Uh, if you get a chance, and if you have the ability to peel yourself off, because this is a big, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big investment to go through the whole series. It's like 14 books, but the first book kind of closes itself off nicely. You can kind of just read the first book and walk away from it and it's um it's a beautiful beautifully done well done story the first book at least um eye of the world by robert jordan book one of the wheel of time series i'd say check that out ray ayanami has a question which is what are some of your ways with coping with stress uh, i have a couple of different things i do i will turn off all distractions and put on some music and just kind of lay back and soak in my thoughts sometimes i'll go for a drive Sometimes I'll just play some video games, put on some cartoons, you know, it's just about tricking your brain, you know, letting go of ego, 
and just letting your basic brain functions, you know, your deep base level cave person, caveman, cavewoman functions take over. Like, oh, cartoon good. Or, mmm, donut yummy. You know, just, just turn off your thoughts, basically. Or replace them with good thoughts. And come back to situation after you've let yourself de-stress. Yeah. Ken Can has a question, which is, what do you do to boost your confidence? Or if you know you're in the dumps, what do you do to get out of that? Um, boost my confidence. I'll, I'll read, <laughs> I, I save like touching letters from y'all. You know, some cardigans send me touching letters sometimes and I'll save them and I'll go through them if I need like a confidence boost or if I'm feeling down in the dumps, I'll just, yeah, just distract myself. Kind of a very similar answer to my previous question, which is, you know, be in, be the master of your thoughts, be the master of your emotions. Don't let your emotions control you. Um, if you need to turn them off, turn them off and distract yourself, but then, you know, address them later on after you've calmed down. Emotions plus turbulence um, lead to explosions, you know, but emotions plus a calm and level mind can lead to some really deep thoughts and some really groundbreaking uh, realizations. So don't be afraid to just step away from your ego, you know, let go of the problems 100%. Like if something bad happens, don't be afraid to be like, all right, this is really fucked up. I'm in a really bad situation and I'm just going to ignore it for a bit. I'm going to go do this thing. Later on, when I'm a lot more calmed down, I'll stop and think about it. But for now, I reserve the right to walk away and take a little break. We got a question from Shanice N. What would you say to an aspiring author like myself to up our confidence? How should we get our stuff out there? As for getting it out there, like I'd say, I don't know, social media seems to work. Um, if you're looking for advice specifically for how to get your stuff out there, I'm still trying to figure that out myself. I have no idea how the channel continues to grow and I want it to grow bigger and I don't know how to do it. Um, one thing I'd suggest is the age old adage that content is king. Just do it. Just write it. Don't, don't, don't let yourself get caught up about how do I get my writing out there? How do I have a, people see it? How do I merchandise this? How, how will I print the books? Don't worry about any of that stuff. Write, just write, write and write and write and write and write. When you have lots of content ready to go. Then you can worry about how to blast it around on social media. But when it comes to anything, like people always asking me like how to start a YouTube channel and um, advice for budding YouTube artists and all, all these different things, my first answer is always just do it. Just do it. Don't let your dreams be memes. <laughs> just, you know, commit to your plans and do it. You know? Um, it took me a long time before I started making money off this Cardinal Audio thing, and now it's my full-time job. But you have to have the passion and the love and the drive to do it, even if you don't get paid, even if there, even if no one sees it, even if no one responds. It has to be all you want to do. You know, you have to be able to p propel yourself. All right, we got a question from Sakura8, which is... When you first started uploading your voice recordings, did you feel embarrassed? Or did you start having second thoughts about it? Do you have any tips? Oh boy. I feel like I already answered all these questions, actually. But let's see. When you first started uploading your voice recordings, did you feel embarrassed? Um, no. Because I know that nobody knows who I am and that no one can, like, find me and, like, point in my face and be like, Haha, I know what you're doing. You know, like, this is all anonymous online, so... No, I was never embarrassed. I was more excited to see how people would respond. You start having second thoughts about it? Um, I started having second thoughts about whether or not I should do it full time. You know, it's kind of a scary leap to do this a YouTube thing full time when you're a grown ass adult with child support and bills and whatnot and rent to pay. 
But I figured, you know, I, I always love it when people say things like follow your dreams or, you know, don't talk about it, be about it. And I figured I needed to embody that for once. And ever since I have, my life has been tremendously better. Uh, do you have any tips? Asks Sakura8. Yeah, just do it. Just, just do it. Just do it. If something's stopping you from doing it, then you don't really have the passion to do it. And you just need to figure something else to do. But if it is killing you on the inside not to do it, then you should do it. Don't do it if you're looking for money. Don't do it if you're looking for recognition. Don't do it if you're looking for fame. Just do it because it's what you want to do. And it's what you need to do. Pia asks, where do you see yourself in two years? Hopefully still doing this. Yeah, hopefully still doing this. Hopefully still um, doing this. Plus some voice acting. Plus, you know, sending myself, my, my son off to college. Plus... Uh, married or in the process of marrying my girlfriend. Plus, settled into a home that's my own. You know, that'd be nice. Sophia T actually asked the same exact question. Where do you see yourself in two years? So, there's your answer, Sophia T. Let's see. Sarah Loves has a question, which is, With scenarios that you're asked to do and have done, how do you mentally and physically prepare yourself before the mic? Also, who do you think, uh, well, let's see, we'll, we'll answer that question first. How do you mentally and physically prepare yourself for the mic? So, I set up the mic, you know, I have this little vice thing that clamps onto my desk, and I set up the arm, and I plug in the mic, and I get everything settled up, and I just kind of sit up close to it, like I am now, and, you know, maybe do some quick breathing exercise or something, kind of like balance myself, get a drink of water so my mouth isn't sounding so dry, or not just non-stop mouth sounds, even though I know I have tons of those anyways. Uh, I have the script up on the screen, ready to go, in a place that's clean and clear, and I make sure it's at a font size that I can read, and I just do it. Sarah Loves also asks, also, who do you think of, or if you even, or if you even do, Oh, who do I think of, or do you think of anybody, while voice acting the erotic ASMR recordings? Example, the DDLG scenarios. Um, I don't think of anyone. <laughs> it's just, it's just acting. You know, I don't uh, imagine myself in a scene or anything. I, I see the lines on the paper, and I kind of, well, I guess I do imagine the scene, but it's, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't lose myself, you know, I don't let, I don't let me, the person at the mic, lose myself in the fantasy. I let the character, Cardlin, lose himself in the fantasy, and then I kind of say what he'd be saying if he was, like, really caught up in the scenarios and whatnot, but I don't let my, I don't, I don't put my own ego into the audios, so, hope that answers your question. We have a couple of questions from Miss Sarah Jackson couple of questions here. The first one is, would you ever do an ASMR convention if there was one? Um, I thought about this, and I think the only way I'd do it is if I could go digitally. <laughs> like, somebody brings a laptop and a, or like a big old screen, and I, you know, I'm, I'm sitting somewhere nearby in a hotel with a webcam, and it's like showing like a digital version of Cardlin, and I'm like speaking, my voice is coming out and stuff, and you know, I'm kind of like, you know, I, there's a webcam set up so I can interact with the crowd as well, but it, I'm not actually physically there. You know, I'd still want it to be Cardlin. I don't want to break the... Di I don't ever want to break the connection between Cardlin and the listener by interjecting myself into it. You know, because it's not about me. It's never been about me. It's always about the listener being comforted by Cardlin. So I'd do it if I could do it like that. Uh, let's see, Miss Sarah Jackson continues to say, I know artists like you, The Grey Knight, Aussie Ben ASMR, and Morgan Audio stated just your voices, but I follow other artists like Phoenician Sailor, Netflix and Chills ASMR, Olivia's Kisper ASMR, and Articulate Design ASMR who show their faces. I bring that up because I wonder if you decide to do an ASMR convention, would it be hard for you or would you just not do it? I would just not do it. Would the other voice artists I've mentioned feel the same, do you think? I have no idea. You'll you'll have to ask them. 
Also, if you can't answer this one, that's okay. Is there a rivalry? Oh, this is the second question. Is there a rivalry slash bad blood between voice ASM artists and ASM artists who show themselves? Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I don't, I don't think there is. Honestly, there's not like a community that we all hang out in, you know what I mean? There's not like a, it's not like we're all in high school and we're forced to interact with each other, you know? Because it's all done on the internet, I, I'm kind of in my own private little silo. And if ever I interact with other people, it's because I have to actively reach out to them and, and contact with them, you know, communicate with them. I otherwise, for the most part, don't know what everybody else is doing. I mean, I sometimes wish I had a tighter pull, uh, tighter, you know, finger on the pulse of the ASMR community, but I'm also kind of happy with the community we have here. Like, I don't... It, it's it's a two-edged sword, right? Because on one hand, I do kind of wish I knew what was going on elsewhere, so I could kind of maybe learn new tricks and see, like, what we could gleam for other people and kind of take back to our community. But on the other hand, it's like, I don't want to potentially lose what we have here or risk what we have here because I really like what we have here. And um, it's our own little private pocket of the world as weird as it is and i and i kind of love it <laughs> all right we have some other questions let me go ahead and pull them up give me just a second here actually it looks like there's just one more question from queen of the night which is uh what's the weirdest comment you've ever seen um i mean of course there's spam right things like people just trying to post their own stuff but uh, in terms of weird ah uh, jeez um I don't know, like, in terms of weird, I guess, like, people asking if I'm specific people from their life, you know, like, are you blank, and do you work at blank, because you sound just like him, or are you this voice actor, because I'm pretty sure you are, and stuff like that, and then I'll go and listen to that voice actor and be like, I don't sound anything like this person, which is, I always think is pretty cool, you know, to think that, uh, you know, people really, um, what I found, at least, to be true, is that a lot of times people kind of uh, um, they kind of project their own desires onto something. So if they hear somebody saying something sweet and romantic, and there's something that they've always there's somebody in their life they've always wanted to say these sweet and romantic things to them, they'll kind of project that person onto them, even if that person doesn't actually sound anything like me. Yeah, I believe that about brings us to an end for the questions. Now let's go ahead and move on to some quotes. These are always fun to do. Let's see what quotes we have. We don't always have a lot, but, um... Uh, here's one from Rihanna. It's from A Midsummer Night's Dream, Act 1, Scene 1. And, uh, I, I have the deepest, most utmost respect for the, the bard, for, uh, for Shakespeare, so I hope I really do this right. Um... Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. And therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. I like that. We have a quote from Yama Yasita, which is, 2018 is the year for everyone to put their best foot forward. Speak and stand within your truth. Don't be afraid to stand up for what is right. You shine bright in your energy. Be the best version of you that you can be. That is a beautiful quote, Yama Yasita. Thank you very much for that. We've got a quote from Yuki T, which is from Zeniba. Uh, Zeniba, which is a character from Spirited Away, I think. Uh, and the quote is, Nothing that happens is ever forgotten, even if you can't remember it. Megan P says, One of my favorite teachers said, What the dickens were you expecting? Something great? <laughs> I like that. Uh, Z, Zaleatrix, says something from the movie Labyrinth, like, oh, this is a good one. Fear me, love me, do as I say, and I'll be your slave. Rest in peace. And finally, Amanda Rochelle says, you should say your favorite movie quote. Alright, favorite movie quote. First thing that comes to mind is, um... Ah, okay, I got it. It's from one of my favorite movies, if not my favorite movie of all time. And, uh, it's, it's both my favorite quote and also something I kind of live by when it comes to, like, it's like a, like a rule I use in relationships. Which is, um, you're free to leave me, but just don't deceive me. 
you know, trust is everything. And if for whatever reason you don't want to be with me anymore, that's that's fine. Just tell me. You know, we can move forward and, you know, we're both adults. We can go on with our lives. But don't let me live in a lie, right? No one wants to live in a lie. I believe that about brings us to a close with our questions and quotes. So now we're going to say hello to a whopping list of 215, 214, 200, well, around 200 plus uh, new Patreons who signed up since December. And uh, yeah, if I mess up your name or if I, I say it wrong or if I missed it, or if you didn't get a chance to uh, message me in time, don't be afraid to message me now on Patreon to let me know, and I'll get you in on the next one, okay? Or, uh, yeah, let me know if I mess up your name you want me to say it again, let me know, and um, let me know the proper way to say it, and uh, I will happily re-record it for you in the next one. For now, let's go ahead and say a big thank you to A. May, Ada Hawk, Adam, Adora, Adria, Ariana, Alex Jordan, Alexinia, Alexis, Amanda, Amanda Rochelle, Anna, Angelina Evenstar, Angie, Anonymous Buddy, Ariana, Ashley, Audio Soul Babe, Audrey, Autumn, Becky Mitchell, Benny Hanna, Blythe, Bree, Brooke O'Brien, Bunny, Calliope, Cam, Carla, Carrot, Catherine M, Cecil, Celery, Charlotte Rome, Chelsea, Chelsea Morris, Cheyenne Wolf, Chesa Moon, Christina, Courtney, Crystal, Crystal Zhang, Daniela, Danielle, Devil's Chocolate, Drake, Draven, Isa, Alexis, Eli, Elizabeth Mardis, Elsa, Emily, Emerald Meadows, Emily Lacoste, Emily M, Emma, Ari, Essence Shiri, Fue Draws, Gabriel, Gabrielle, Galatea, Georgia Birking, Geraldine, Glitchy, Haley Erickson, Hannah, Heidi Wild, Holland, Hoshino Haruka, Helena, Hungry Potato, I Believe in You, Iggy Bautista, Isa Sarahi, Izzy Birdie, Jay Snow, Jade, Jade Loren, Jasmine, Jazz, Jennifer C, Jessica, Jody Marie, Joe Michael, Jordan, Josh B, Kaya C, Caden Pugsley, Carla, Casey, Cat0214, Kathleen Felstead, Katie Kamen, Catlin, Katniss Evergreen, Casey Moon, Kay, Kaylin, Kelly, Ken Can, Kendra, Kendrick Martin, Kita, Kitten Sarah, Clara M, Kirsten, Kuro Kumori, Kylie, Lauren Ashley, Lauren Feeney, Lauren Strauss, Layla Alice, Leah May, Leah, Lily, Little Kitten, Lizzie, Lolly, Latavia, Lulu, Luminous, Mabel, Madison Ryan, Michaela Body, Mallory, Maria P, Meds, Megan, Megan P, Melissa, Melissa Lopez, Mercy, Michael, Michelle, Mindy, Misa A, Miss Sarah Jackson, Miss Tyrius, Misty Davis, Miriam, Nani, Nancy Lamb, Nanny, Nemo, Neon Slaughter, Nevea, Nick Hale, Natasha, Nabella, Olivia, Paige, Peter, Phoenix, Pia, Pixie87, Purple, Pusanisa, Rachel, Regrettable Moose91, Ray Ayanami, Rihanna, Rita Hatake, Rob, Robin, Roe, Rose Starter, Roxanne, Ruth, Sabby, Sadie, Sakura8, Sam Ross, Sam Zur, Sarah Loves, Sarah P, Sable, Shadow Wolf, Shakela, Shania, Shanice N, Shayla, Cheyenne, Sika, Sophia, Sophia T, Sophie G, Spazzy Fay, Talia Cunningham, Tainted, Tamika Roselle, Tanner Mason, That Mom Friend, The Anime Girl, Tia, Tiffany, Trinity, Trisha, Talia, 
Tyler, Vina, Victoria, Yamayasita, Yolanda Luces, Yuki T, Yumi D, and Zelayatrix. Thank you all so much for signing up. So sorry that I made you wait a full month, everybody, in December. Thanks, everybody, for your patience and understanding while I was getting settled into the new place and while I was enjoying my time with my, you know, my girlfriend and my son being out here. I'm uh, back to being all on my lonesome, but it's okay because I've got y'all. And hopefully I'll be able to get back in the swing of doing things like streaming more regularly. Uh, I want to play a new game with y'all. Lately, I've been really stuck on Monster Hunter World. Have any of y'all been playing that? Uh, anyways, hopefully you'll be seeing a lot more of me, and together we can come up with some ideas for how to really get this channel out there in 2018. How to really grow the channel. If you have any ideas or have any suggestions for me, feel free to let me know in the comments below, or email me at cardlandish at gmail.com, or tweet me at Twitter, or how, however you want to do it. Don't be afraid to reach out to me, okay? I can't always respond, and I can't always have big long conversations with people who message me, but I still read everything I get sent, and I appreciate all of it, I promise you. Thank you all so much for being here. Thanks for being a cardigan. And... I really mean it when I say this, y'all. I love y'all. Seriously, have a good one. Take it easy. And... Cheers.